get into it. <laughs> Yo, what's going on, guys? Locked out men back. Yes, sir. Back again with another podcast for you guys. I hope you guys are enjoying it. If you are, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell for more content like this. This is what I do. I, I, I bring truck driver interviews, owner-operator interviews. We do exposed. We do it all over here. I just, uh, if you want to come on and use my platform, uh, to get your story out or your experiences out, you know, come on and do that. Definitely uh, hit me up in the Gmail, and I'll let you guys know what that is at the end of the show. Uh, today's interview, man, we're going to bring on a young man that's uh, that's uh, that's affected by all this uh, madness that's going on right now. And um, we, we want to hear from his side of the story. Today, we're bringing in Leonardo Alvarado. I think I pronounced your name all damn wrong, man. Go, go ahead. Say uh, your you, name you, again. You pronounced it right. <laughs> oh. Uh, Leonard Alvarado. Leonard. Le- like Leonard. Leonard. Oh, okay, 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 yeah. okay, okay. Leonard Alva- Alvarado. 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 Yeah. Yes. All right, all right. So this young man right here, he reached out to me, man, and I uh, wanted to tell you know tell his side of the story on uh, on what's going on between uh, uh, the owner operators versus uh, the brokers out here, man. Uh, you, I, I want to say you're you're not a lease driver. You're you're not a you you're not a lease purchasing driver. You're an actual owner operator that owns your own truck and and book your own loads, right? Uh, definitely, I'm my own operator with a lot of experience, and I book my own loads. I uh, take care of my whole business 100. percent Okay, to inform on that. Now, I just wanna, I just wanna make that clear because, like, a lot of you know, it's it's a lot of stuff that's going on, and you got a lot of drivers that's against drivers, a lot of drivers that's against brokers, a lot of brokers that's against drivers. So, I just wanted to make it clear that. This this young man right here is a natural owner operator and not a lease driver that's leased on with a company that will get a lease driver's loads for him. This is a young man that that comes out that starts his day at uh he says here it starts his day at four o'clock in the morning, fielding you know fielding around th- uh, two hundred and thirty calls just to get just to get a load for, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever that he's trying to do, man. So, uh, Leonard, man, for, for my, for my people that's listening, for my people that's watching, uh, go ahead and, uh, give a little bit about yourself, man. Yes, my name is Leonard Alvarado, and, uh, I got a lot of experience in the industry since 1994. And, uh, right now it's just, you know, the rates that we're seeing right now is something that I have never seen in history. Okay. You know, and uh, a lot of my brothers and sisters, we're hurting desperately right now because a lot of us are losing our business. You know, a lot of us, um, we purchase new trucks, and with these trucks that we have to purchase, the reason we're doing them is because we got to keep up with the regulations from FMCSA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now... We got a truck payment, you know, of, of uh, maybe twenty four hundred between twenty four hundred and three thousand dollars plus insurance on top of that another thousand to fourteen hundred dollars depending if it's a dry van or a reefer, you know, or flatbed. So right now with what's going on with the brokers that they're price gouging, you know, we cannot afford to run a business. So what's going on is that's keeping us home. And if it's keeping us home, you know, we can't pay those bills no more. And uh, that's what they want. So in reality, we got more issues in the brokers right now. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, B1 visa drivers. Uh, no, I'm not. Okay, B1 visa drivers, that's an international license from any other country like Mexico and Canada. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So what's going on is we got these mega carriers like J.P. Hunt, 
Jota Jota Munoz, that's JJ Munoz out of El Paso, Texas. You got um, England. You got uh, Swift. These guys have uh, their own yards up in the borders of like uh, Laredo, Mexico, New York, Tijuana, Mexico. Um, where else? Um, Nogales, near Nogales, Arizona, on the other side. And they got big signs that says, We hired. Um, B1 visa drivers in Spanish, right? Mm -hmm. So what they're doing, they're getting these guys with those international licenses coming in with a load from Mexico. They pay them approximately 22 cents a mile to come into the state. Legally, they come into the state with that B1 visa and the international driver's license. They come and they, they'll drive to, let's say, New York. Once they're in New York, Rules and regulation is that they need to pick up a load nearby and they have to go back to Mexico. But what J.B. Hunt is doing and Swift and J.J. Munoz are doing, all these guys, they're keeping those guys from New York. They'll send them to um, the Northwest, Portland, Washington, so they don't even send them back. So now they're taking freight from us. So mm. they could go ahead and run cheap freight. They could go ahead and write, run extremely cheap freight. Why? Because... They got these guys as slave drivers, and they're taking us out. So now the brokers, are, it's kind of like they're teaming up with them. You know, you get the brokers paying cheap, and who's taking the cheap freight? This made up carrier. Why can they do it? Why, do, why are they available to do that? Because they got the B1 visa drivers. Okay. A lot of people are not familiar with B1. You know, a lot of owner operators, they, they, um, some owner operators say, oh, yeah, I'm an owner operator, but in reality, they don't know certain things about the industry right right okay 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 so 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 you you say that you know the the the, the, the freight rates has has dramat has diminished uh, yeah uh within the years man so back take me back up when when freight rates was good back up in the back up in the 90s what what you guys was averaging uh, back then oh versus God. what y'all averaging now? We were around between 3 and $4 a mile. You know, uh, ab above that, that's in the 90s. That was excellent money. All right, so I, I want to play devil's advocate with you for a minute. So at that time where the money was good, there really wasn't no there really wasn't no issues with with the brokers. I guess I guess back then it was all love with the brokers and everything. Y'all didn't really care how much the brokers was taking their percentage out as long as you guys was getting uh the the amount that they was giving at the time. Reason why? Because we didn't have no mega carriers like XPO, like Uber Freight, Convoy. We we didn't have this these guys like uh, CRST really started like I, I believe in 1990, 92, mm -hmm. you know, so practically they were the only ones. And uh, there, there was, we didn't have as many B1 drivers, you know, visa drivers either in the United States. So what, so I, I guess that goes on to what I said or what I've been saying, uh, what I've been saying that these that these companies now you know mega carriers because you know they bid for freight especially when they're trying to uh, you know they, they when they try trying to uh, you know keep their sales afloat so that's why you know that's why they use the spot mark I mean spot market so it's like what I said before is it's the drivers and or the companies that's that's beating down the rates. So why so why are you so so why so why is everybody so mad uh about what the about what the brokers are doing if the drivers and the companies are beating down the rates? The 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 brokers are just are just following suit. Like, yo, okay, well, if I can, you know, if if the amount that I put out there is like a thousand dollars, but you got, you know, uh -huh. you got a company that has a driver that's you know that's driving for them for like twenty two cent a mile or or whatever cent a mile, they can chop it down to like maybe about eight hundred nine. I mean eight hundred seven hundred dollars. You know what I'm saying? I I agree with you. I I do agree with you because um, what's happening is the 
what we're trying to do is this, look, we want the brokers to make a certain percentage, like at least, man, at least, you know, 7%, 10%. But they're, right now they're keeping 65 to 75% of the load. Right. So you figure that's, so that's, so you figure you you figure that uh that they doing that is because you know they 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 probably now don't get me wrong I listen I'm not I'm not yeah. siding with with nobody here. I'm I'm just looking at it, you know, I'm a I'm just a lonely company driver. You know what I'm saying? But I'm yeah. I'm just looking at it, you know, I'm just looking at it for from 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 both sides so you figure okay. you know I, i'm looking at it from both sides as a business uh as a business owner because i was you know i own my own business back in the day but uh yeah. if they if if they decide to keep at some amount of percentage do, maybe it's because they doing more of the leg work to get the loads for you guys now the way i that now don't get me wrong we are doing majority of the leg work because you know we gotta you know we gotta drive the load we gotta wait for the load we got it we got the we got the regulations for the load uh we are responsible for the load you know what i'm saying i i get that i get that but i guess the way with the brokers is feeling like low yo I, i'm i'm here uh I'm here eight hours a day trying to get, you know, trying to get loads and trying to keep afloat and all like that for myself. Well, they got a load board for brokers. So practically all, all, all they're doing is double brokerage. Uh, for example, you got loads that uh, JB on has right now on the load board. They cannot even cover the load. So what happens is in one hour, I will check and see Travis has the same load. So they took it from them. So they bought they, they bought, they bought it right away. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, so in re- they don't really spend that much time as an owner operator because the owner operator, remember, we got to get up at four in the morning. They they normally start around eight in the morning, and all they do is um get on the computer and buy maybe five loads. You know, uh, like for a small broker, go ahead and buy five loads, mm-hmm. and that's it. And I understand it's not all 100% their fault. We got drivers, I got friends of mine right now driving at a dollar a mile. I will not move my truck for a dollar a mile because I'm a professional trucker and my business would not make it. I will file bankruptcy Mm -hmm. and I will be another victim on the welfare system. And that's something that, you know, I would never do. So that's why I'm home right now and um, just writing it off, you know, writing it off and praying that everything goes well. Do you think do you, do you think what's going on in in DC right now? Uh, you you think that's going to make a difference? Um, definitely, it's going to make a difference because we tried this in 2019 with a slow roll, and uh, it really didn't work out. You know, I was very disappointed on uh, April last year when we tried the slow roll; it didn't work out. People were not united. This time is different. This time we got many immigrants. And that's been helping out uh, the trucking industry, you know, because I don't know if you see that, you know, when you go to uh, go, go to different channels and you see who is out there. So we get different people from all over the world out there representing the t- trucking industry, you know. So we're and we know it's working. Why? Because right now, I don't know if you saw yesterday, they came out with a new rules for FMCSA and uh, HOS hours. Yeah, of for service. hours of services. I really don't have a. <laughs> I really don't have an opinion on that. I mean, somebody, I, oh, one of one of my good friends, uh, Jarvis Jones, uh, sent me the article and asked me what was what was my thoughts on it. And I, to be honest with you, I, I really don't have uh, have an opinion on it because the the changes that was that was changed to me, it was so minor. I mean. Oh, it was. It, it just tickled me. You know, it, it was so. It was so minor. I mean, I. You know, I was thinking like, you know, when they was over here talking about major changes and all like that. I'm thinking like, oh, okay, we. You know, there's going to be changes in the hours that we can drive. We could get more control of, of how we drive. You know, drive our hours in the day. You know, we don't have to stop for this 30 minute break to get our actual 11. I mean, three hours of drive time left. You know, I thought it would be like, yo, we can take a break whenever we can and 
and you know maybe maybe change the hours of service from you know 70 or whatever or we can run our clock however we want to run it but you know the 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 um the information that was brought out was so was so minuscule that you know it's basically in my opinion nothing we still we still can run you know eight two split now it's a seven i think it's a seven three split now that we can do but right who right. who does that <laughs> you know what i'm saying who who's gonna do a <laughs> who's gonna do a seven three split <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know we, you know, <laughs> eight. Two, who's gonna like sleep? Me. Who's gonna sleep in a sleeper for seven hours? You know, just to get whatever hours that they can get back, man. Eight hours is is what it is. But um, right. But you, you know, but well, but as a that 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 when they when they came up with that right there right now, um, I was kind of like. Okay, this is why you ask me if it's working. It, it is working because they came up with that, right? Even though it was a little thing, but in reality, is they're doing it so we could go away from D.C. They want us to get out, and it would be a mistake if our brothers and sisters pull out of there. They need to stay there, you know? They need to stay there, and we, the rest of the brothers and sisters, we need to go ahead and and help them out, you know, because those guys have families too. Well, you they know what? I tires. I agree with you. They they do need to they they do need to stay there, but they they need to be peaceful about it too, because there's exactly. there's some articles yeah, that's coming out. There's some articles that's coming out that some of the drivers, you know, are being a little bit of disruptive and all like that. And if it's and if it's too much to a point, then you know, like like the old saying goes one bad apple can can spoil the bunch so they need to be peaceful out there man so you being the owner oh, yeah, yeah. oh go ahead no no oh yeah but like you know every industry has its bad apples but so far for what i've seen we we got excellent people representing us over there you know but uh i did see some negative stuff you know and um hopefully things get better though for for them out there now you i've been trying to get out there myself but i don't got the money even to go i was even um thinking like if i just get a plane ticket i was like where do i stay over there so i gotta try to contact somebody see if they got a hotel and you know or if we got any type of help we could stay there at least to have a body over there you know uh, representing the trucking industry, somebody who has knowledge also so what so what the brokers uh what the brokers are doing they're, you know, what you guys is calling price gouging, taking taking percentages of upwards of, you know, 50 percent, 75 percent, 80 some some as high as 85 percent. What is you what is you as an owner operator is trying to um, is trying to accomplish? Uh, we're trying to uh, practically get for them to get regulated just like we do. You know, just like we get regulated, we're trying to do that and get transparency on the books. Like if you get a load and you, and and you be like, "Hey, bud, I got this load. Okay, how much? Uh, there we got we got three thousand on it. Um, I'll go give it to you for it. Twenty five. That's decent. I'll be happy with that. You know, I'll be happy with that. And he's making five hundred dollars profit behind the desk. And not just that, he has a few more loads to go to. You know, so he got income coming on a daily basis where he don't have to run 750 miles a day, 700 miles, you know. Hello? Yeah, yeah, can you hear me? Oh, uh, okay, yeah, kind of lost you there for a second. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Okay, yeah, so what? I, I don't know if you heard me, but or like what I was saying was we just wanted transparency, you know, where we want to see how much the load, the, even for the load, and um, you know, at least keep you know fifteen percent between seven and fifteen percent. I say that that's that's fair. But as I you know, but as I said before, uh, but as I said before though, um, I I know you guys is is it, 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 you guys want transparency. You you want the you want the shippers. You you pretty much want the shippers to. I mean, not the shippers, but you want the brokers to open up their books to you, and. Some of the some of the brokers some of the brokers is not is not too keen on that. I mean, you know, a lot of people a lot of people don't want to don't don't want to don't want to say how much you know how much they're getting. They they only want to tell you how much we're giving. You know, say like say like a Walmart, they buy cheap, 
you know, they buy cheap over in uh they buy cheap over in China and sells it and sells it over here three times, you know, three times the going rate. You know, but it's it's in reverse for you guys. They, you know, the brokers is trying to find, you know, find the freight at 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 a higher price. They they get that and then they try to find an inexpensive driver or inexpensive owner operator to run it. That's no, no, no. And, that's and, fair and like market, I said, right? I, 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 yes, I don't, I don't blame them a hundred percent. There's also, like I said, there's owner operators um, that don't have no idea, you know, how to run their business. So they're one of those guys that go ahead and run cheap. So those guys are blaming brokers when they're the ones that are the problem themselves. So let me ask you this. Now let me ask you this. Instead of in, it, instead of instead of trying to go after the brokers. Why not just why not just, you know, try to unite all of the truckers as one? And, you know, I, I know I know the thing I know the saying is to stop taking cheap freight. But why not try to unite as one to stop taking cheap freight? I mean, you know, I, I got I got something else to say on top of that, but I want to hear what you have to say. Uh I actually write about that a lot, you know, and uh, I agree with that 100%, but it's so hard, so hard. Like I said, uh, I got friends of mine that are part of the problems right now. They're running cheap, and I cannot unite them to come in, you know, like, like I'll tell them, um, hey, you know what, stay in the yard, man, what are you doing? So they're just going away. So that's part of the problem. We can't get everybody to unite. You know, we can. If we want to make a change, we need to shut down Man, with two weeks, two weeks, all truckers, all truckers, including uh, company drivers, we shut down. You know what? We're going to be successful. You, and you, and, we, and uh, we can. everybody can end up being happy. We can, but that's never, ever going to happen. Because just like how, just like, right. just, just like how, just like, like how, you know, they, you know, how big companies have strikes. There's always going to be some scab workers. There's going to always be somebody that's going to take that load. <laughs> There's going to always be whoever that's going to take that load. And it's just going to make it, it's just going to make it a little bit harder than what it is. That's why, that's why unions went to the wayside because there's so many, there's so many other, other people out here that are hungry that, that will take whatever they can get. And if and if somebody if if that one person ain't going to take that load for a dollar, you can best damn believe somebody another driver is going to take that load for a dollar, fifty cent, seventy five cent. Well, you see, I myself, I don't blame everything on the brokers itself. I blame everything on the mega carriers because they're the ones that really are killing us by having all these people, like you said, slave drivers. Mm -hmm. That's what they got. You know, so since they're getting all this cheap freight, I mean, they could do it because they got slave drivers. See, the see the see the mega carriers, the mega carriers can make can can find ways to make money to make up for that, uh, make up for the money that they're not getting from one place, uh, from one place. Oh, they can do that. Well, oh, one one of them is uh, through their CDO program. You know, where uh, I say about maybe 75% of, of uh, those new students that go to the schools, you know, like Swift and them, they'll go to Swift and take the class, right? In two weeks, they get their license. Those guys um, will go ahead and maybe last about, I say about 10 days. They quit. Now they get penalized and they have to pay, pay back $10,000. There is thousands of those guys in the situation where they got to pay Swift or, um, or Western Express. All right. So they they're, so they're making money on those violations because they got a contract, you know, where they tell them, "Hey, you stay with us, and uh, you know, you get your you, you, for a whole year. You stay with us for a whole year." All these guys, when they realize it, the way trucking really is, they're they regret it. So yeah. they end up in ten days. They're out. They're out. Yeah. You see them backpacking at, at the truck. They stop. see. They, they, they it's see. Not, they, it's it's not it's not conducive to uh to getting in here. Getting into this industry at one at one point or another, man, was uh was 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 great. 
at at one point or another. But now, you know, now you got all these you got all these mega carriers now that's offering lease purchase options um and and all these other options that they offer uh, offering for potential drivers, which is lightweight messing up the actual owner operator that actually went and brought his truck from an actual dealership or whatever the case, man. Um, truck driving, man. You, you, you. you there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, th- there's a lot of things other than, other than the fight with the brokers that that we really need to get. Uh, get awareness on um there's times you know as as leonard says in his uh text to me there's times that you know we have to worry about parking you know there's not enough there's not enough parking out here for us truck drivers we we have to park in shady areas where we have to worry about if we're going to get robbed at gunpoint or anything like that uh or if we're going to get kicked off the property or or whatever the reasons there's there's situations like that that we need to that we need to make aware uh that we need to make aware we also need to make aware that uh that uh the the regulations for you know for some of the truck drivers is just not fair for us you know what i'm saying um let me tell you about one experience I had with, as soon as that when the ELD really kicked in mm-hmm. um i was going to uh, colorado I was about maybe 45 miles away, and I had uh, two hours, approximately two hours to get there. So, you know, 45 miles, it was about 3 p.m., 3 p.m. on a Wednesday. So I was like, oh, man, I'm 45 miles. I got two hours left to drive. I was like, man, I'll make it, you know. And suddenly there was an accident. So there, on that accident, I was already there for about an hour and maybe 30 minutes so i was like oh my god my heart started panicking because i was like i'm gonna go into violation Mm -hmm. what do i do what do i do so i was like i i supposed to deliver to uh, the following day so i was like well i'm just gonna get off on this next exit so i got out with parked at a walmart when i parked at walmart i was like oh man i'm only 30 miles away from the place i'll wake up in the morning that's it so i was there suddenly somebody's knocking my door it was an officer Officer, like, hey, you can't park here. I said, well, um, why not? He goes, because it's private property. You can't park. Well, I'm going to go ahead and buy some stuff. I go and uh, talk to the manager. No, you can't. Right. So I go, well, I got a problem. I go, I don't got no hours left to drive. Mm-hmm. Well, that's not my problem. You should. So he says, that's not my problem. You should have planned your trip better than that. You're a professional truck driver. You should have known that. I was like, well, I didn't know there was going to be an accident. Sometimes, and exactly. And I'm only 30 miles away. Exactly. <laughs> they, 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 they don't see people like that don't understand what, 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 what people like us go through. I mean, if you, if you stuck to, if you only could drive 11 hours a day and you get to a place where your time runs out, you literally can't move the truck. I mean, you can, you can PC. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't talk about that. But yes, you know, you could you could PC, but literally if, you know, before be now I now I I liked it when they when they modified the PC. I liked that. That was a good thing. I liked that. That that was a good thing when they modified the PC. Oh, I'm I'm all great. So if you if you come up to an accident and you know you're going to be, you know, you're going to be stuck Take the clock off, jump in the PC, and then you can, you know, you 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 can drive safe. But before all of that, when your clock was out, you couldn't move. Period. If you move, you go in, you go in the you go in the you go in the violation, and then you 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 go you get pulled into a to a DOT. They look at that, and then you had to jump through hoops and explain and all like that. And sometimes. They wouldn't even. They they'll still write you a a a, a ticket for uh, HOS violations. So, oh yeah. So what I ended up moving, I ended up driving like at three miles an hour, and parked in the middle of the street right there, and threw my flashers on. You know, and man, I had no choice. I, I had no choice. I, I was like, what am I gonna do? I had to actually call. I actually had the company call a tow truck company. To come and tow oh, me to a truck stop because 
I didn't have no hours. That that was ridiculous. But uh, but man, how? So you, so you, so this this has affected you personally, uh, bit time. When when did it? When when did the effects started to take place on you, and uh, up to the point that you actually decided to park the truck? Um, a month and a half ago, I was up in uh, Houston. I live in Portland, Oregon. So normally I get out of Portland, I go run for like two months mm-hmm. and then uh, come back home and stay about, you know, 10 days and, you know, just so I could uh, have a good run. So when I was up in Houston, I noticed uh, I was doing runs from Dallas to Houston. Um, from Dallas, I was getting 800, $825 going to Houston. Okay, That's about 200 and maybe 30 miles you know okay so I was sounds like, pretty good man, i was like yes in, in the fuel i was paying only uh two dollars and 12 cents mm-hmm. at that time okay so i was like man i like this and then from from uh, houston i was go back going back to dallas you know with uh 700 bucks so i was like oh man i'm running a little bit of miles fuel slow on it and, and that's it you know i'm not killing my drugs and i was rolling with uh what is it? Roll, roll of toilet paper mm-hmm. to Sam stores, mm-hmm. you know. So I was making good money, but then, like two months later, I saw the rate from uh, eight hundred and twenty-five drop to three fifty. So I was like, that was on a Monday. I was like, what? Mm-hmm. I go, I, I come with a guy. I was like, hey, uh, I've been doing this low for so long. He goes, oh, can you give it to me for this much? He's like, no, I give it to you for three fifty. Mm-hmm. I go. Oh, no, that's all right. I go, so that was a Monday. So I told myself, well, that's not bad. I've been here for two months and a week, and this is the only day I didn't work. Oh, well, I go, I just got to relax. So on Tuesday, I see the notes again because they had about 20 notes a day. So I see the notes. I call them back, and I say, hey, uh, I'm going to Houston. Um, can I get the note? He goes, yeah, 350 I was like, oh, hell no. I go, you know, if you do that, they're going to have you as a cheap owner operator you know so you will never get paid good again so i was like forget it i'm gonna get another note with another broker so i ended up getting a note with another broker for 525 dollars. so i was like man this something's happening so when i got to houston mm-hmm. i seen the loads and uh i was like man something's wrong so i was like forget it i'm out of here that wasn't like that uh i picked up on tuesday deliver wednesday so on uh on thursday i picked up a load in Houston going to Phoenix for $2,000. So I was like, man, I'm getting lucky because they were only offering $1,400 that day. Mm-hmm. So I got lucky. Once I got to Phoenix, I went to MT to California because from Phoenix, they only want to give you like 350 to $400 to California, and I don't run cheap at all, you know? Right. I'd rather go empty than taking that freight and, uh, you know, uh, putting wear and tear on my equipment with a heavy load. So I was like, forget it. So I went to California. Normally from California, I get twenty four fifty to go to Oregon. That's like the uh, rates from like first quarter, you know, low low rates. So when I got to California, they they I remember uh, I was uh, fighting to get twenty four, <coughs> and I couldn't. I couldn't. So I ended up getting out with eighteen fifty three, something that I never done before. So I was like, oh man, I better go. So I went back home, and since then I've been here a month and uh, but a month and two weeks I've been home. Okay. And uh, I can't move, even though I'm dying to go out, you know. I want to be in my truck. You know, I love trucking. Okay. But I can't do it because getting out of Portland right now, the rates are at 50, between 57 cents a mile to 72 cents a mile. Wow. I mean, you guys, I mean, I, I mean, rates really, really, really took a hit. Uh, especially after this pandemic. So, but I, I, you know, like I said, I'm looking at it from both sides of the fence. So, you know, I, I feel for, I definitely feel for the truckers because, you know, I, I'm a truck driver myself. I mean, I'm a company driver, so I can't, I can't begin to understand the, you know, the, I can't begin to understand what you guys are fully going through, but, you know, but with some of the drivers that's coming on the podcast talking, I, I get to see, you know, some of the I get to see some of the things that you guys are saying. And then I get to see what some, something with uh, what the brokers are saying, man. So I'm, I'm no, hoping here's a sample. Oh, OK. Uh, here's a sample. In 20, what is it? 28, 20, 
2017, I was going from Portland to Dallas, 2,000 miles with a weight of uh, maybe 7,000 pounds of coffee bags. Mm -hmm. So I was going over there for, they were giving me 4,200, 2,000 miles. I would drop off right there in Dallas, and then the same warehouse, I would reload again at a different dock, coming back to Portland to the same place for 5,500. I was averaging net, net in a total of eight days, I was netting $8,200 from, so I was netting 8200 in eight days. That was good money. Now, the same run from uh, here to Dallas, they want to pay me uh, approximately $1,800. Okay. Okay. That's what's up, man. So see I, big I see the bit difference. I, I see the bit difference, man. That's that's crazy. That's crazy. But uh, I'm I'm hoping I'm 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 hoping for some type of resolution, man, for you guys. I, I don't think it's gonna happen overnight. I think I really I, I really truly believe that you guys have an uphill battle because uh like I said, some of the some of the brokers, you know, they're they're not they're not gonna fall. They're they're not gonna fall yet, you know what I'm saying? They they figure, you know, they figure, hey, you know, we we got the lows, y'all don't you know, y'all don't wanna move it. Somebody's gonna move it, man. Um and, 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 and yeah, definitely. And they're right about that. You know, they're going to have, a, uh, like I said, you know, they got those slave drivers, you know, they're going to go ahead and do it mm -hmm. because we're not united 100%. Mm -hmm. That's that's what you guys need to do, man. All right, Leonard, man, I, I, I appreciate you coming on, man, and and, uh, and and chopping it up with me about uh, what's going on out here. Um, what, what do you – what do you got do – you, do you have any uh, advice or – you know, or do you have any tips on on new drivers that's coming out into this industry uh, that's thinking about me? Me personally, I, I really don't think this is a good time to go on an operator. But, you know, for the drivers that that are thinking that what, what, what suggestions you have that that can work out for them? Well, right now, the best thing to do is uh Staying with, 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 with if they're getting their CDL, if they're really getting their CDL, right, or or they they, they just stay as a company driver. Look for a company where they're getting a bonus to sign it, so to sign in with them for like seven thousand dollars. You know, seven thousand dollars sign up bonus for a year. So you stay with them because with them right now you're making more money than the owner operators. <laughs> Wow. And, and another thing is, if, if those companies convince those drivers and tell them, hey, you can make more money, lease a truck from us, do, do not make the mistake of leasing that truck. At the at the end, you will give up because you're not going to make enough money because what this big uh, mega carriers are doing is they'll give you the truck. And uh, believe it or not, I know a lot of guys that lease trucks, and they're only averaging $400 a week. A week, and this was about eight months ago. Mm. You know, and, and you cannot survive with that. So my best thing is, you know what, stay, stay with a with, with a company as a company driver, at least for for two more years, for two more years. You know, and when they decide to go owner operator, you know, don't even. Uh, start start with an older truck that's the way i that's what i did i started with an older truck and uh ended up having like four trucks at one time and um you know because the breakdowns on this new truck as you know or oh my god or horrible okay okay yeah they, these new so, trucks break down so, like like freaking water so all right that's, that, that's another thing you think that's another issue that we that we got, you know, the breakdowns with these new trucks and all the rules from the EPA, you know, uh, dealing with the death system, that's killing us right there. That's money that we're losing. I got you. I got you. All right, uh, Leonard, man. Well, thanks. I I do appreciate you coming on, man. I give you a shout out. Uh, when when is it you when, when is it you personally going to get back out there, man? I mean, what? When how long? Uh, when when is it going to be for you to get back out here, man? I mean, you, you know say you've been sitting for, for a couple of months. Truck? So when when is it? Yeah. 
I need to get out. Uh, I look at the Lobo every day. So if I could get out with, from Portland, Oregon, with uh, at least a dollar and uh, eighty-five cents a mile, I could I will get out. But I need to make sure that if I go to the Midwest or or the Midwest or the East Coast, I need to see those rates at two fifty to three dollars. Okay. Because I'm not gonna run from here, you know, running at a dollar. A dollar eighty a mile, dollar fifty a mile, and then I get over there, and the rates over there are at a dollar thirty. You know that means I'm not gonna make no money because after I finish eating, yeah, after for after I finish eating it on daily basis, expensive. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm gonna be driving at about eighty five cents a mile, hmm. All right. and th- there will be no money, and, and, and I won't have money for maintenance for wear and tear. Something happens on the road, I'm done. I'm done. I got you. All right, Leonard, man. Well, thanks a lot, man. I really do appreciate it. If you guys want to come on and chop it up with me like Leonard did and, you know, tell you know tell me your side or how you feel about what's going on out here in the industry, yo, do that at LockoutMenPodcast at gmail.com. You can text me at 216-600-2090 or just go over to Instagram and hit me up over there. Uh, make sure you, you know, just hit me up and hit me up in the dm you can also if you're in one of these trucking groups that i'm in and you know my government name you definitely can hit me up over there as well so definitely come on and chop it up if you guys like content like this and more don't forget to subscribe comment share and uh hit that bell for more content like this man I am your humble host, Lockout Men. Thank you so much. You're very well. God bless you and God bless you all the truckers. I, I appreciate you, Leonard, man. Thank you very much. Uh, and on that note, me and Leonard are gone. <laughs>